Pompeii, one of the more memorable and frightening chapters in the ongoing drama. Most dangerous volcano in the world. That they were afraid, they were panicked, and it was terrifying. If they should die by suffocation, we should expect to find them just defending themselves or trying to breathe. If these people on the beach were suddenly engulfed in dust and debris and ash at 500 degrees centigrade, these people would have been dead within two seconds. Even after archaeologists have excavated two-thirds of Pompeii, this once thriving city buried for century under Mount Vesuvius's ash remains an enigma that scientists are still trying to solve. Garden of Fugitive. This time I came up with a discovery that shows the frozen final moments of people caught in Pompeii. This garden of fugitives. Present in the land of Pompeii, it is quite a tourist spot. It's over in Region 1, aka Insula 21. The reason it's famous is because it has the plaster cast of 13 people who didn't make it when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD. This place used to have a couple of houses, but it was mostly turned into a veggie garden and vineyard. It's right near this big area called the Palra, and just inside what's known as the Nuwara Gate. The entire fugitive army was discovered by this guy, Amadeo Marari, who was in charge of looking after Pompeii. He was in the middle of inspection when made the discovery in 1961. They filled these spaces with plaster of Paris to make the casts, showing exactly how these people looked when they were buried by the eruption. Originally, these casts were found in separate spots, but now they've been put together in one long line. Horses of Pompeii. In 2018, some archaeologists digging around a well preserved villa just outside Pompeii found a whole horse. And not just one, but three. One of these horses was rocking a military style harness made of iron and bronze, which is pretty fancy stuff. This horse was a bit smaller than the horses we see nowadays, about 150 centimeters tall at the shoulders. But back then, that was considered pretty big. The fact that this horse had such an impressive harness and was a big size-wise makes the experts think it was a super important horse. They reckon this horse was part of the high-class circle in Pompeii. Owning a horse back in those days was a big deal. Not like today, where it's a lot more common. And it wasn't just these horses, but loads of other animals too that didn't make it during the eruption. Dogs of Pompeii. Well, it's totally shocking that researchers found an actual guard dog from ancient Pompeii, still tied up. This dog was found on November 20th, 1874. It was a guard dog tied up at a post in the house of Marcus Vesinus Primus. They found it in the atrium, which is like a big open part of the house where rainwater was collected. The cast shows the dog with a collar around its neck. Meanwhile, it was tied up and couldn't run away when Mount Vesuvius started doing its thing. As the ash started pouring into the atrium and filling up the space, the dog just couldn't get out and met its end. But hey, let's hope he's in a better place now. Perfect teeth. All right, now get ready for this one. This is something kind of weird, but true about the people of ancient Pompeii. They had amazing teeth. Yeah, I know we usually believe they would have had bad teeth, but no. Well, recent studies show that most of them actually had perfect chompers. But why were their teeth so great? Well, experts think it's down to a couple of reasons. First, their diet. Unlike our sugar-loaded and processed food today, they ate loads of fruits, veggies, and grains, and didn't really do sugar much. This kind of eating really cuts down the chances of getting tooth decay. But there's more. The air in Pompeii had a lot of fluoride, this thing that makes your tooth enamel strong and fights off decay. It probably got into their drinking water and food, which would have helped their teeth stay in top shape. So it's like Mount Vesuvius was giving them a dental health boost, even though it eventually went kaboom on the city. 
love for bread. Let's shift gears to something more delightful and chat about bread. Yeah, you heard right, bread. Turns out the people in Pompeii were big fans of it. They often grabbed their meals from street vendors. Pompeii was this lively Roman city famous for its fancy lifestyle and diverse food scene. Well, I must say, strolling through its busy streets surrounded by delicious food smells is a real treat for anyone who loves to eat. What we know about their food habits comes from some cool art found in the ruins. These frescoes show how the ancient Romans made bread, from kneading the dough to baking it in ovens. Among the discoveries was this fresco showing a type of flatbread and even a carbonized loaf that they pulled out of an old stone oven. This flatbread looked like a modern pizza, but it wasn't quite the same. It was just a simple round bread topped with fruits and nuts. No cheesy tomato goodness like today's pizza. So even though they loved bread, I can't really say Pompeii was where pizza started. Ancient Baby This significant discovery in Pompeii was made a while back. Researchers found the skeletons of a fetus that was about 36 weeks old. When they were digging around, they found this small bone that turned out to be a pregnant woman, suggesting the baby was almost fully developed. Then, during more digging, they found something big. The skeleton of an adult woman who might have been wearing some fabric or lying on it. That's the shape of that body. Uh... Alongside her were things like an oil lamp and some coins. But the really amazing part? Inside her remains was this 36-week-old fetus. The way they found the tiny bones of the fetus, like its hands and feet, were super well-preserved. It's like a big deal for archaeologists because it helps them understand a lot more about the people who lived back then. So obviously the poor woman died with a... Pompeii's unluckiest man. There's this story from Pompeii about a guy who people thought was super unlucky when they first found him. He was buried under hardened lava, and it looked like a huge boulder had squashed his head. Turns out when they removed the rock, they saw his skull was actually all in one piece. After checking out his remains, including his chest, arms, skull, and jaw, they came up with a new theory. They now think he died because of the pyroclastic flow that's the super hot gas and ash from the volcano. This new idea changes how we think about what happened during the eruption. It's a really spooky thought being caught in this storm of heat and ash, and it gives us a glimpse into the scary stuff that the people in Pompeii went through. Villa of Mysteries This super well-kept villa in Pompeii called the Villa of the Mysteries is quite a sight in Pompeii. Voila, you get really vivid color of fresco. It's just outside the main city and is famous for its fancy frescoes. Honestly, some of the best from the old Roman times. What really makes this villa stand out is this massive fresco that takes up a whole room. It's got all these scenes that have been making historians and archaeologists scratch their heads for ages. This is the villa of mystery because nobody knows what is the fresco is all about. The fresco is super colorful and detailed, and people think it shows the startup rituals of some secret club dedicated to Dionysus. The scenes are super lively and intense, with people doing everything from dancing to getting whipped. There is a big debate about what the room and the fresco really mean. Some experts think it was where women got into this exclusive Dionysian club, learning secret stuff and doing special rituals. Others think the scenes are like a big metaphor for life, from being born to getting hitched, or maybe even about changing and growing on the inside. But one thing's for sure, the entire villa showcases how luxurious the lifestyles of the Romans were in the past. Everything here is pretty much original. It's been 2,000 years, get buried. Pompeii's ancient graffiti. Now, this one really intrigued me. The researchers found something pretty cool that showed what everyday life was like for the Romans almost 2,000 years ago. Graffiti. Yeah, just like the stuff we see today on walls. These old writings scratched onto buildings give us a real peek into what people back then were thinking and feeling. It's kind of wild how much this ancient graffiti looks like the stuff we say and feel now. It shows that, in many ways, people haven't changed much over the years. 
The graffiti in Pompeii talks about all kinds of stuff, from serious to funny, from political stuff to personal messages, even just I was here kind of messages. It's pretty much like ancient social media, where everyone just said what was on their mind for others to see. There's even a funny one about how the bread in Pompeii is okay, but for drinks, you gotta go to Nicaria because they're better there. It's like the ancient version of reviews. Ancient Shrine in Pompeii So, this discovery is really epic. A well-kept shrine called a Lilarium. A Lilarium was like a special place where the Romans honored protective gods of their homes. The one they found is almost like a hidden garden. It's got this awesome fresco showing all sorts of things like snakes, peacocks, and shiny golden beasts duking it out with a black wild boar, birds, well, a tub, and even half a man, half dog figure that might be inspired by animus from Egyptian myths. The colors and details on this fresco are mind blowing, especially when you realize how old it is. There are these two snakes and a wild boar in there battling some mysterious creatures, all set against this deep red background that really adds to the mysterious vibe of the place. Plus, the altar in the shrine is all about fertility. It's got egg decorations and archaeologists found burnt stuff like eggs, figs, or nuts near it. Stuff people probably offered to fertility gods. There were also paintings of Roman household gods around the altar, which shows how important this spot was for religious stuff. Lovers of Pompeii For a long time, people have been fascinated by the plaster cast of two figures holding hands in Pompeii. Discovered in the early 1900s, these figures were found in a never-ending embrace, capturing their final moments together before Mount Vesuvius' eruption. Initially, everyone thought these were a couple or maybe two women, but scientific methods reveal that both figures are male. This discovery makes us wonder about their relationship. Were they brothers, friends, or something more? No matter the real story, their embrace, frozen in volcanic ash, is timeless. It shows a moment filled with kindness, care, and perhaps even fear as they experience the eruption together. As we get together at studying history, we uncover much such stories that would have been forgotten. Pompeii really is a place where memories are frozen in time. The Cast of Pompeii People today feel very sympathetic by seeing these figures of Pompeii, but it is important to remember that the figures you see aren't the actual bodies of the victims. They're stone-like casts that show exactly how these people looked in their last moments. This was all thanks to a guy named Giuseppe Forelli, who came up with this idea in the late 1860s. So after Mount Vesuvius erupted back in 79 AD, over time the bodies inside these ash shells just disappeared, leaving hollow spaces. Fiorelli figured out that the spaces were the exact shape of the people who had lost their life. He started pouring liquid plaster into these hollow spots. When the plaster dried, they took away the ash around it, and voila! There were these detailed casts of the people, just as they were when it happened. This method meant that researchers could see not just how these people were sitting or lying, but also their facial expressions and even the clothes they were wearing. Ancient Roman Laundry Mats Ever wondered how people did their laundry over a thousand years ago in places like Pompeii? Besides loving to eat out, the Romans were big on doing their laundry outside too. They had these public laundry mats that were about 2,000 years old. These old laundry spots were part of a huge restoration project in Pompeii, costing around 105 million euros or about 115 million dollars. These ancient laundry mats had big tubs, stone basins, and stands where people washed, dried, and even ironed their clothes. Now, here's a fun fact. The Romans actually used mctrician to clean their clothes. Yep, you heard that right. It was considered super valuable because it has ammonia in it, which is great for getting stains and dirt out of clothes. They'd soak the dirty clothes in big containers filled with water and urine. The ammonia in the urine broke down all the grease and dirt, making the clothes nice and clean. We're pretty lucky nowadays to have soap, bleach, and detergent, so 
we don't have to go the urine route. Pompeii's Ancient Fast Food One of the coolest things explorers found in Pompeii is this old-timey snack bar called a Thermopylum. It's pretty much like the street food stalls or fast food places we have now. Back in Roman times, these were super important, especially for people who didn't have their own kitchen or were too busy to cook. So what kind of food did they have? Archaeologists found that snails were a big hit there. The Romans loved them cooked with all sorts of herbs and spices, making them both yummy and healthy. Fish was also a major part of their diet, and of course they had bread. Another thing that might surprise you about these snack bars is how they were set up. They had these big jars called diola built right into the counters. These jars were used to keep and serve hot food. This way people could grab a quick ready-to-eat meal. So yeah, Pompeii had its own version of fast food back in the day. Middle class in ancient Pompeii In 2022, archaeologists dug up something shocking in Pompeii, a middle class home. It's a big deal because it shows a real difference between how the average man lived compared to the super rich people back then. They found four rooms in this regular family's house and got a peek at the kind of stuff they used every day. It's a lot less flashy than what you'd find in the fancy villas of Pompeii's wealthy crowd. This find gives us a little snapshot of what middle-class life was like just when Mount Vesuvius decided to bury the city in 79 AD. They found things like ceramic dishes, decorations, and even more personal stuff like a trunk that looked like it was packed in a hurry, a bed, and this cute little terracotta perfume burner shaped like a crib. All these things together show that these people had a pretty decent life, but it wasn't all about luxury. It seems like a lot of people in the Roman Empire were hard workers who wanted to make their lives better. Stabian Baths in Pompeii The Stabian Baths explorers found in Pompeii are a big deal because they show us just how awesome the city was before Mount Vesuvius erupted. These baths are the oldest out of three bath complexes in Pompeii and people think they were built way back in the 4th century BC. The way the Stabian Baths were designed tells us a lot about Roman architecture and how important public baths were to them. The place had different rooms, each with its own heating system and temperature settings, and the Romans didn't hold back on making it look nice. The whole place was decked out with cool frescoes, mosaics, and sculptures. Imagine chilling in a bath surrounded by this art. Sounds pretty relaxing, right? But bathing for the Romans wasn't just about getting clean, it was more like hanging out as a water park where you catch up with friends and make new ones. Today, that might sound weird, but back then, it was a big part of their social life. And now, let us move on to our subscriber pick of the day. This image was sent to us by a subscriber. Similarly, if you ever wish to know more about an image you come across, just send it to us. Who knows? We might even feature it in one of our videos. In 2017, archaeologists dug up some super tall human skeletons that could be around 5,000 years old. These bones were really big and sturdy, with some of them measuring up to 1.9 meters tall. Along with the bones, they also found pottery and jade stuff. What makes this find really wild is that people in that region aren't usually known for being super tall. So if they had giants back then, Imagine how tall ancient people might have been in other parts of the world. This was a really astonishing discovery, as seeing people that giant is actually impossible to believe. Well, we have proof for it. See you next time.